everyone and welcome back to Mike and his whiteboard. My name is Mike, this is my whiteboard, and today we're gonna delve into standard deviation. So we've learned about implied volatility and how implied volatility is simply a representation of a one standard deviation move over one year. So to give you an example, if we have a stock at 100 and we have an implied volatility of 20%, that means that the stock theoretically could go up to 120 or down to 80 with a probability of 68% over the course of one year. So that's one standard deviation. So what standard deviation essentially does is it takes implied volatility and kind of puts it into a bucket or a map for you so you can kind of see visually exactly what you're looking for and exactly Exactly what might happen in that period of time. So we're gonna talk about standard deviation today and we're gonna to break it down in one standard deviation and two standard deviation terms and also give you a little cheat sheet of numbers to be aware of. So without further ado, let's get into it and discuss standard deviation. So standard deviation is essentially a distribution of occurrences around the mean. So if we imagine this middle line here as the stock price, if I've got all these dots which are occurrences happening around that stock price, essentially this, this line above it that curves down across here is the number of occurrences that lie within that range. So Obviously, we're going to have a lot of small moves with that stock, so let's say we have a thousand occurrences here. We're gonna see the majority of those moves pretty much be very close to where the stock price is. However, we're going to see those large moves, which we consider to be the tail risk moves, if you've ever heard that term before, and we're gonna see that to the upside and the downside. And with probabilities and standard deviation, we're gonna assume a normal distribution, so we're gonna see this pretty much symmetrical across both sides here. So when we're talking about one standard deviation, you'll, you'll pretty much see the lines here on the right side and the left side. And this is actually displayed on the Doe platform for you and it automatically adjusts on the trade page when you're looking at different expirations. So we've done a great job to make this very easy for you and easy to understand and follow along as we go here. So if we go to the next side, we can break down some percentages here. So if we're looking at one standard deviation, like we talked about before, we're looking at a 68% probability of that stock price being within a certain range. So when we relate this to implied volatility, a higher implied volatility is going to widen out the graph and a low implied volatility is going to narrow the graph. So if we were to imagine this graph expanding all the way across the page here, that's gonna be a very high implied volatility. Basically, there's gonna be a wide range of probabilities and very large spikes that are implied because of that high implied volatility percentage. And on the flip side, if we have a very low implied volatility, we're going to see our standard deviation become very narrow and that's going to be the case for you know, very low implied volatility markets where we don't expect too many drastic movements for a certain underlying. So the reason I have 68% in here is because we're looking at one standard deviation right now. So if I'm looking at a number of occurrences and I'm talking about one standard deviation, I'm talking about the probability of 68% of whatever occurrence landing within this specific range. So when I talk about occurrences and probabilities, I know that everything is going to add up to 100%. So if I've got a one standard deviation for both of these sides to create this 68% zone, that means that I have a 32% on the other side. So what I'm looking at here is 68% probability out of the money. So consider these one standard deviation lines to be strikes. So we're always talking about options and stocks and strike prices. So again, let's assume that the stock price is right in the middle here. And let's say I'm looking at a one standard deviation call, which would be above the stock price, and a one standard deviation put on the uh, below the stock price here. So what we always like to do is sell premium. So we're looking for implied volatility to be very high. We would go ahead and sell this and hope that implied volatility comes down. Now let's talk about how this is going to relate here with these strike bars. So if I'm looking here at these lines and I know that this range is going to be 32% on the outside or a probability of an option being in the money, then what I know is since I've got one strike here and one strike over here, I've basically added these numbers up to create this 32%. So what this all boils down to is when I'm looking at a one standard deviation 
probability of being in the money, I'm going to see a 16% on one side probability of being in the money and a 16% probability of being in the money on the other side. So when we create zones and we're basically looking at both sides of this spectrum here, we want to use both of these numbers and add them up to determine the probability of being in the money. So I've got my 32% probability of being in the money for both of these options. And since I know everything comes to 100%, I know I can just take 100, subtract 32, and take my and get my percentage of 68%, which is probability of being out of the money. So that was a lot of math, but we're gonna talk through it again in the next slide here, and we're gonna talk about two standard deviations. So two standard deviations basically encompasses 95% of the occurrences given a certain period of time. So again, same thing, but now we're looking at two standard deviations instead of one. So if I know that my probability of being in the money for both of these strikes is 5%, that must mean that each of these strikes has a probability of being in the money of 2.5%. So again, if I'm looking at an out of the money call, if I was to sell an out of the money call way above the stock price, which is again right in the middle here, then I would be looking to look for the probability of that strike of being 2.5% in the money for the call side and 2.5% being in the money on the put side. That's gonna give me a total probability of being in the money of 5% as you see here and basically give me this encompassed range of 95% which basically accounts for our two standard deviations for this specific underlying. So if we go to the next slide, we can talk about some numbers to remember. So this is really the cheat sheet that I've been wanting to provide everyone. I know we, a lot of these numbers are, can be confusing, but if you just write it down and keep it all in track, it'll be much easier when we're looking for certain strategies. So here at I'd like to start with a one standard deviation option or range. So if I'm looking to sell a put, I might start at a one standard deviation out of the money put. And if you're watching hear that all the time they'll be talking about one standard deviation strangles one standard deviation out of the money puts or calls a lot of our research segments are actually starting with one standard deviation so it's good to know these numbers so let's walk through this table here so this this section with the black numbers here is just looking at single options and this section here in the red is looking at a strangle so again we're, there's a big difference between looking at a probability of being in the money for one option than there is for two because for one option I can be correct if the stock price goes anywhere on the other side of the spectrum but if I'm using two options I need to combine those probabilities of being in the money because now I've essentially created a range as opposed to infinity to one side or infinity to the other side. So if I'm looking at a one standard deviation option, I want to look at an 84% being out of the money, probability of being out of the money, or a 16% probability of being in the money. So depending on what you prefer, it really doesn't matter. Both of these are gonna add up to 100% regardless. So whichever you learned is probably gonna be easiest. So whether you learned with probability of being in the money or probability of being out of the money, it doesn't really matter as long as you have these numbers in mind. So again, if I'm looking at, let's say an out of the money put and I'm looking at an out of the money percentage, I wanna see an out of the money put of 84% or close to 84% for one standard deviation. And if I'm looking at in the money percentage, that's just gonna be the inverse of that 100. So 100 minus 84 is 16. And again, since we're talking about strangles, which creates the two zones, I'm always gonna use the probability of being in the money. So I would take this probability of in the money for of 16 on one side, 16 on the other, which is 32% probability of being in the money, which of course will be 68% since we're looking at out of the money as you see here. So let's walk through this again with two standard deviations. So if I'm looking to sell something way out of the money, I'm gonna be looking at something with a 97.5% probability of being out of the money at expiration and on the inverse side if I'm looking at in the money percentage I would be looking at 2.5 percent so again these numbers are always going to add up to 100 and it really just boils down to what you prefer to look at and since we always use the in the money percentage for creating zones so if I'm selling a strangle in this example I would take the 2.5 percent probability of being in the money on one side 
add it together to the probability of 2.5% on the other side, which is gonna give me a total of 5%, and I would subtract that from 100 to get this 95% out of the money strangle. So these are some numbers that I think are great to remember for standard deviation. Hopefully you enjoyed this segment. If you've got any questions at all, shoot it over to me at support at dough.com or support at But you can also tweet us at Doe Trading, at Doe Trader Mike, or at and one thing I'd like to point out, this is pretty much a big overview segment of this, so if you'd like to get a little more deeper or more in-depth math, you can check out the Skinny on Options Data Science, and our Dr. Data in the house did a great job, and it's called um, actually Standard Deviation, you can look it up, and he actually provides an Excel spreadsheet, which you can pretty much input into Google Sheets, and you can calculate this yourself. So hopefully that helps, and until tomorrow, I'm Mike, thanks for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our video. Click below to watch more videos, subscribe to our channel, or go to take